We already talked in the last video about user interfaces, and believe it or not, this goes with it. However, I, I keep it as a subset um, to make you understand. And we're going to talk about shell menus. And before I start rifling through the bullets here, what I want you to understand is what a shell menu does. So think of a snail or a turtle. <laughs> they both have shells, right? And in their case, it's for protection. But ultimately, the snail and the turtle can live without the shell. The, um, that shell serves a specific purpose. Same thing here in terms of a game. A game will be allowed to play, but it also has this shell menu that kind of wraps around it, like the, like the good old snail shell, and it can be used to be functional. Then the question becomes, well, what can it do? Well, think about this. You, you need to be able to load a game. You need to be able to save a game. Um, you need to be create a new game. Things of this nature, settings, um, you may not want on your internal game GUI. And in fact, generally, you don't. So you usually have some screen that welcomes the player when they first get in because you don't necessarily want to rush them straight to the game. Because what happens there? Well, you have to presume that they either want to continue the game they've been playing or they want to start a new game, right? And what happens if they've done the opposite of those two? So you create the shell menu that kind of handles this. And as you can see, you do not want this as part of the gameplay mode. It's its, its own separate thing. You, um, you may, you're going to want to integrate it with the style of the game, but you don't necessarily you don't want it directly impacting the game world. Once you have this shell menu, um, now you can put different things on there. Uh, the, as, it's, as the second bullet makes sense, don't put too much on there. You can always have a button that leads to more buttons, right? So, uh, in other words. One can just say settings, and then once they get into the settings, they can do audio, visual, gameplay, and then those can have a set inside each one of those. Um, most of the time, people don't want to adjust those when they get into a game. So to keep just the settings button on the top, that works really well. And the last bullet I, makes me laugh, which is true, um, that this is the first thing you see. So if you make a cheesy one, which they are easy to do, because really, I mean, you just might want to put a couple flat buttons and, uh, you know, a blue background or a black background or something like that to make it work. But th it's representing your game. So some people might get into there and be like, oh, what? You know, what is this? You know, a two-dimensional platformer that uh, from the '80s. You know that they they might not get excited by that. So, what you want to do is integrate what you're doing in the game here and give it a nice, nice look as well. Go, go ahead and use the extra textures. They generally do not take up a lot of space in terms of memory or hard drive, so you can actually polish these pretty nice. In fact, I've seen games where the opposite occurs. You have this beautiful shell man, you're getting the game, you're like, oh, <laughs> but it got you in there, right? or it got me in there at least. So they do have their place. However, function should be the first step, and then making it look good is, is the second. So make sure it works perfectly because they will not come back if, you, if your save does not save. <laughs> Overall, simple concept, but it, at the same time, we still need to look at this and understand that we need to make these.